Hey everyone, it's Alex again, and I am back with a very long overdue video. I should have made uh, several videos about what I'm going to be talking about o over the past few months, but, but unfortunately I just got very busy with the things that happen in everyday life, and every time I wanted to make this video, something else came up that uh, took my attention away from that. I'm not one of those people who makes YouTube videos as a full-time job. This is something I do in my own spare time, but hopefully I can do a lot better and get these videos out earlier next year, during next year's awards season cycle. But I'm finally here today to bring you uh, a list of the winners, as well as uh, a small review of the ceremony, if I was able to watch them. The following four award ceremonies, the 21st Critics' Choice Awards, the 22nd Screen Actors Guild Awards, the 69th BAFTA Awards, and the 36th Razzie Awards. These four award shows are basically uh, the middle part of the sandwich, uh, where one piece of bread is the Golden Globes, and the other piece of bread is the Oscars, because the Golden Globes are the first award show of award season, the Oscars are the last award show of award season. And these four award shows are basically the meat that goes in between the bread of that sandwich. I decided not to include the Oscars in this video because since the Oscars are the biggest award show around, it really deserves its own video. And some of these award shows, like I said, I was able to find out the winners, but I wasn't able to watch them for whatever reason or another. But I'll get to that when I get to those specific award shows. But for the award shows that I did watch, I'll give somewhat of a, I'll give a small review on the ceremony, mainly because it won't be as big as my previous uh, ceremony review for the Golden Globes or my future ceremony review for the Oscars, because these award shows don't tend to put on as big of a show as the Golden Globes or the Oscars, and therefore not much really happens during them other than the presentation of awards that can really be talked about. But I will talk about the winners and whether or not I like them. So, I'll try and get through these as quickly as possible. First, I'm going to go over the winners of the 21st Critics' Choice Awards. I'll start off with the Television Awards and then move on to the Film Awards. So here are the Television winners for the Critics' Choice Awards. Best Supporting Actor in a Comedy Series, Andre Brower, Brooklyn Nine-Nine. Best Supporting Actress in a Comedy Series, Mayim Bialik, The Big Bang Theory. Best Actor in a Comedy Series, Jeffrey Tambor, Transparent. Best Actress in a Comedy Series, Rachel Bloom, Crazy Ex-Girlfriend. Best Guest Actor or Actress in a Comedy Series, Timothy Oliphant, The Grinder. Best Comedy Series, Master of None. Best Animated Series, Bojack Horseman. Best Structured Reality Show, Shark Tank. Best Unstructured Reality Show, Anthony Bourdain, Parts Unknown. Best Reality Competition Show, The Voice. Best Reality Show Host, James Lipton, Inside the Actor's Studio. Best Talk Show, Last Week Tonight with John Oliver. Best Supporting Actor in a TV Movie or Limited Series, Jesse Plemons, Fargo. Best Supporting Actress in a TV Movie or Limited Series, Jean Smart, Fargo. Best Actor in a TV Movie or Limited Series, Idris Elba, Luther. Best Actress in a TV Movie or Limited Series, Kirsten Dunst, Fargo. Best TV Movie or Limited Series, Fargo. Best Supporting Actor in a Drama Series, Christian Slater, Mr. Robot. Best Supporting Actress in a Drama Series, Constance Zimmer, Unreal. Best Actor in a Drama Series, Rami Malek, Mr. Robot. Best Actress in a Drama Series, Carrie Coon, The Leftovers. Best Guest Actor or Actress in a Drama Series, Margot Martindale, The Good Wife. Best Drama Series, Mr. Robot. Now onto the film winners. Best Art Direction, Mad Max Fury Road, production design by Colin Gibson, set decoration by Lisa Thompson. Best Cinematography, Emmanuel Lebeski, The Revenant. 
Best Costume Design, Jenny Bevan, Mad Max Fury Road. Best Film Editing, Margaret Sixel, Mad Max Fury Road. Best Hair and Makeup, Mad Max Fury Road. Best Original Score, Ennio Morricone, The Hateful Eight. Best Original Song, See You Again from Furious Seven. Music and lyrics by Justin Franks, Andrew Cedar, Charlie Puth, and Cameron Tamaz, a.k.a. Wiz Khalifa. Best Visual Effects, Mad Max Fury Road. Best Action Movie, Mad Max Fury Road. Best Actor in an Action Movie, Tom Hardy, Mad Max Fury Road. Best Actress in an Action Movie, Charlize Theron, Mad Max Fury Road. Best Animated Feature, Inside Out. Best Comedy Movie, The Big Short. Best Actor in a Comedy Movie, Christian Bale, The Big Short. Best Actress in a Comedy Movie, Amy Schumer, Trainwreck. Best Documentary Feature, Amy. Best Foreign Language Film, Son of Saul from Hungary. Best Sci-Fi or Horror Movie, Ex Machina. Best Original Screenplay, Josh Singer and Tom McCarthy, Spotlight. Best Adapted Screenplay, Charles Randolph and Adam McKay, The Big Short, based on the book by Michael Lewis. Best Young Actor or Actress, Jacob Tremblay, Room. Best Supporting Actor, Sylvester Stallone, Creed. Best Supporting Actress, Alicia Vikander, The Danish Girl. Best Actor, Leonardo DiCaprio, The Revenant. Best Actress, Brie Larson, Room. Best Acting Ensemble, Spotlight. Best Director, George Miller, Mad Max Fury Road. Best Picture, Spotlight. All right. As for the Critics' Choice Awards ceremony itself, it was pretty good. T.J. Miller was the host. He did an okay job. Uh, some of his jokes were funny. Uh, some of them were annoying. Like there was this one bit where he was trying... Oh, I, I can't really explain it because you had to have been watching the ceremony to really understand it. But if you'd been watching, if you had been watching the ceremony with me, and I had been pointing that one part out, you would have known exactly which part annoyed me. So it involved like puppetry or something. I'd, I'd have to watch the clip again to find it. But it just that that one part really annoyed me. Um, but I mean, it was a good show for the most part especially considering how many awards they had to cram in. Because as I said in my Critics' Choice nominations video, this was the first time the Critics' Choice Awards celebrated their TV and movie nominations together. They used to have separate ceremonies for them. In fact, their last TV awards was held in May of last year. So as a result, they had a much more limited option of shows that they could nominate for the ceremony in January. Whereas for movies, the ceremonies always been in January. But it looks like now, unless they decide to vote and split the ceremony back into separate ones, it looks like now a combined movie and TV ceremony will be held in January. But as for the overall winners, uh, television, uh, I don't really have too much to complain about, particularly because a lot of these shows I have not had a chance to watch, so there's nothing I can really say about that. Uh, but for film, uh, I'm not going to try and go into too much detail because, as you'll see, a lot of the winners here will repeat at other award shows, including the Oscars, and I was planning on giving my in-depth analysis to that video. But for the most part, I can say that I liked a lot of these choices. Um, Star Wars, of course, got a last-minute Best Picture nomination because... It wasn't screened for the critics who are part of the Critics' Choice Awards until like the day the nominations came out because they were trying to keep the movie under wraps so that major spoilers wouldn't leak out. So that's why Star Wars is not here for Best Original Score or Best Visual Effects. So and uh, See You Again from Furious 7, you all know that I don't think that song's as great as everybody says it is, but I've already said my piece on that, 
so I'm just going to leave it. For best sci-fi horror movie, I really, really loved Ex Machina, but I would have picked The Martian if I were a voter for the Critics' Choice Awards to win because it was my favorite movie of 2015. But I can't be too mad about that because Ex Machina is a phenomenal movie and so is Mad Max Fury Road. I didn't get to see It Follows or Jurassic World, the other two nominees in that category. So that's all I really have to say for the Critics' Choice Awards because, like I said before, a lot of the winners here would go on to win again at the Oscars, so I'll talk more about those winners when I get to my Oscar video. So now we move on to the winners for the 22nd Annual Screen Actors Guild Awards. Like the Critics' Choice Awards and the Golden Globe Awards, the Screen Actors Guild Awards honor both television and film. So again, I'm going to start off with the television winners first, and then move on to the film winners second. So for television, the winners were Best Male Actor in a Comedy Series, Jeffrey Tambor, Transparent. Best Female Actor in a Comedy Series, Uzo Aduba, Orange is the New Black. Best Male Actor in a Drama Series, Kevin Spacey, House of Cards. Best Female Actor in a Drama Series, Viola Davis, How to Get Away with Murder. Best Male Actor in a Television Movie or Miniseries, Idris Elba, Luther. Best Female Actor in a Television Movie or Miniseries, Queen Latifah, Bessie. Best Stunt Ensemble in a Television Series, Game of Thrones. Best Ensemble in a Comedy Series, Orange is the New Black. Best Ensemble in a Drama Series, Downton Abbey. And now for the film winners. Best Male Actor in a Supporting Role, Idris Elba, Beasts of No Nation. Best Female Actor in a Supporting Role, Alicia Vikander, The Danish Girl. Best Male Actor in a Leading Role, Leonardo DiCaprio, The Revenant. Best Female Actor in a Leading Role, Brie Larson, Room. Best Stunt Ensemble in a Motion Picture, Mad Max Fury Road. Best Cast of a Motion Picture, Spotlight. A lot of these winners look really good to me. Um, Jeffrey Tambor, Uzo Aduba, Viola Davis, Queen Latifah, Leonardo DiCaprio, Brie Larson, Spotlight. Uh, now, Kevin Spacey is phenomenal on House of Cards, but I really felt John Hamm should have won for Mad Men because uh, he gave such a stellar performance in the show's final season, particularly in the series finale that... And, of course, Mad Men is no longer on the air. And I wish that after he finally won his long-overdue Emmy and after he won a Golden Globe, I really wish he could have won a Screen Actors Guild Award as well because John Hamm has won a few Screen Actors Guild Awards as part of the ensemble of Mad Men, but he has never won for an individual performance. Maybe someday he'll win an individual Screen Actors Guild Award for another TV show or a movie, but sadly he never got to for playing Don Draper on Mad Men. And for Best Male Actor in a Supporting Role, this was one of the few award shows where Sylvester Stallone was not nominated for Creed. He, of course, was the uh, longtime frontrunner, and many thought he would win the Oscar, but of course he did not, and I'll talk about that more in my Oscar video. And everyone thought Mark Rylance would win for Bridge of Spies since he was already considered second place in the awards race. But instead it went to Idris Elba for Beasts of No Nation, which was a nice consolation prize for him, especially in part that he got snubbed at the Oscars. Uh, this was the second year in a row, of course, where all the acting nominees at the Oscars were white, You know, the, the t which of course led to the Twitter hashtag OscarsSoWhite again. And hopefully that will not happen again next year, and I'm especially happy for Mad Max Fury Road's win for Best Stunt Ensemble. Because the stunts they pulled off in that film were incredible. Like, 100% real. Real motorcycles, real big rigs, real ATVs, real everything. Uh, very little CGI used. These were stunt men and women who were risking their lives every day. Especially because they were shooting in the desert. So... Big props to them. And as for the ceremony itself, the screen it was a nice ceremony. The Screen Actors Guild Award doesn't usually have a host, 
and it's usually two hours long instead of three hours long, so that way things are able to move really, really fast. But uh, the tributes were good, like the In Memoriam tribute, um, the winner's speeches were good, and uh, the Lifetime Achievement Award given to Carol Burnett, that was really well done. Tina Fey and Amy Poehler did an excellent job of presenting the award to her, and Carol Burnett's acceptance speech I thought was very lovely. So now moving on to the 69th BAFTA Awards. Now, I did not get to watch this award show. Uh, this, unlike all the other award shows, this one takes place in London instead of Los Angeles. This is basically the British equivalent to the Oscars. And here in the States, it airs on, I believe, B BBC America. Unfortunately, my TiVo does not carry BBC America, so that's why I could not watch the show. But nonetheless, I shall go through the winners. Best Art Direction, Mad Max Fury Road, production designed by Colin Gibson, set decoration by Lisa Thompson. Best Cinematography, Emmanuel Lebeski, The Revenant. Best Costume Design, Jenny Bevan, Mad Max Fury Road. Best Editing, Margaret Sixel, Mad Max Fury Road. Best Makeup and Hair, Leslie Vanderwalt and Damian Martin, Mad Max Fury Road. Best Score, Ennio Morricone, The Hateful Eight. Best Sound, Lon Bender, Chris Dostoerdiak, Martin Hernandez, Frank A. Montano, John Taylor, and Randy Tom, The Revenant. Best Visual Effects, Chris Corbold, Roger Guyot, Paul Cavanaugh, and Neil Scanlon, Star Wars Episode Seven: The Force Awakens. Best Animated Short Film, Edmund, Nina Gantz, and Emily Jeffroy. Best Live Action Short Film, Operator, Caroline Bartley and Rebecca Morgan. Best Documentary Film, Amy, Asif Kapadia and James Gay Rees. Best Foreign Language Film, Wild Tales from Argentina, directed by Damien Zifron. Best Animated Feature, Inside Out, Pete Docter. Outstanding British Film, Brooklyn. Outstanding Debut by a British Writer, Director, or Producer, Phoebe, Naji Abu Nawar, and Rupert Lloyd. Best Original Screenplay, Tom McCarthy and Josh Singer, Spotlight. Best Adapted Screenplay, Adam McKay and Charles Randolph, The Big Short, based on the book by Michael Lewis. The Rising Star Award, John Boyega. Best Supporting Actor, Mark Rylance, Bridge of Spies. Best Supporting Actress, Kate Winslet, Steve Jobs. Best Actor, Leonardo DiCaprio, The Revenant. Best Actress, Brie Larson, Room. Best Director, Alejandro Gonzalez in Uritu, The Revenant. Best Picture, The Revenant, Steve Golan, Alejandro Gonzalez in Uritu, Arnon Milchin, Mary Parent, and Keith Redman, Producers. So most of these winners look very good. Uh, they did break from tradition in one category. Uh, best sound, many people thought that would easily go to Mad Max Fury Road, but instead it went to The Revenant. But that's not necessarily a bad thing though, because even though The Revenant is very, very different from Mad Max Fury Road, uh, that film's sound design is just as important to its success as it was to Mad Max Fury Road. Um, you know, the sound of guns, snow, bears, of course, because you all remember the infamous bear scene from that movie, that all made the film what it was and made it just a transcendent piece of cinema. So, bravo to them. Very glad that Star Wars The Force Awakens won Best Visual Effects. Um, that film was a beautiful blend of practical and CGI effects, so I'm very happy for that. Best Foreign Language Film. This is always an interesting category because the UK has a different release schedule than the US for most films. If a film is usually a big blockbuster, it will often be released on the same day as it is in the US, but in the UK, they often get films like a few weeks or sometimes a few months later than they do here in the US in terms of release dates, especially foreign films. Uh, because the winner this year, Wild Tales, 
that was nominated for Best Foreign Language Film at the Oscars last year, not this year. In all the other award shows this year, including the Oscars, the Best Foreign Language Film winner has been Son of Saul. But unfortunately, Son of Saul just came out in the UK like a few weeks ago, in late April or early May. I forget the exact date. Um, I found that out because one of my favorite film critics uh, is British. His name is Mark Kermode. And uh, he gave like, that was like one of the rare times he gave a film five out of five stars to Son of Saul. So because of its release date, that means it's probably not going to be nominated for Best Foreign Language Film at the BAFTAs until next year. So, and it, hopefully it will be nominated and hopefully it will win because that film is a phenomenal film and it's not just another Holocaust film like Schindler's List or The Pianist. It, it deals with the Holocaust, but it's very, very different from those films and not just because it's a foreign film. Uh, Son of Saul, I don't know if it's out on DVD in the U.S. yet. It may be, but if you like foreign films, if you like Holocaust films, or if you just like unique films that explore a certain subject matter in a different manner than what you usually see, then please watch Son of Saul. You won't regret it. It's a very disturbing film, of course, but it's definitely worth watching at least once in your life. Um... The Rising Star Award, uh, as I said in my BAFTA nominations video, this is the only BAFTA category where the general public gets to decide the winner through online polls rather than the BAFTA voters themselves. And John Boyega is a very good choice to win. They had a lot of good nominees. Uh, Taron Edgerton was also nominated. You know, he had a breakout year in 2015 with uh, Kingsman the Secret Service, of course. But he was also in this very underrated movie called Testament of Youth. That movie also has Alicia Vikander, Kit Harington, Dominic West, Emily Watson. It's a very good film about uh, World War I and how it affects uh, this one British family. So if you have not yet seen that film, please give it a watch. I guarantee you will not regret it. Brie Larson was nominated for this as well. She, of course... Uh, swept all the award shows with her performance in Room. So if Taryn Edgerton or Brie Larson had won, I wouldn't have had a problem with that. Belle Powley, I haven't seen her movies. I know she had that film here in America called The Diary of a Teenage Girl. Uh, she's British in real life, but she plays an American in that movie, and I hear she did a fabulous job. So I'll see it. I'll try and see it sometime if I can. Dakota Johnson, I, I, she, I'm sure she was probably nominated for this because Fifty Shades of Grey made a lot of money at the box office, but I don't know if that was good enough reason to nominate her. From what I've heard, from, from what critics have said of Fifty Shades of Grey, she was the best thing about that movie. And she, she was very good in her small role in Black Mass, and she was actually the best thing about... Uh, that awful romantic comedy that came out around Valentine's Day this year called How to Be Single. I'll discuss that at the end of the year in my Worst Films of the Year video, if it's still in my top ten, because I've seen a lot of bad movies this year, and How to Be Single is in my top ten right now, but who knows if there are a lot more bad films this year that could end up falling out of the top ten. I'm uh, very glad that both Mark Rylance and Kate Winslet won Best Supporting Actor and Best Supporting Actress, as they were my picks to win in that category at all the award shows, including the Oscars. And of course, Leonardo DiCaprio and Brie Larson, easily the best in their categories, beyond a shadow of a doubt. So that's pretty much all I have to say for the BAFTAs. And now on to the fourth and final award show I'm covering for this video, the 36th Annual Razzie Awards. Now, I didn't get to watch the Razzie Awards because the Razzie Awards have never been broadcast on television and I don't know if they ever will be broadcast on television. They do have clips from the ceremony that they put on their YouTube channel, but because the goal of the Razzies is to be as opposite of the Oscars as possible, it's probably a major decision on their part to not have the ceremony televised. And even if the Razzies were televised, it would, prob it would be a very awkward show to watch, not only because of the categories like worst actor, worst actress, worst director, etc., but also because 
hardly anybody shows up to actually collect their Razzies in person. A few have done it. Um, Halle Berry did it when she won for Catwoman. Sandra Bullock did it when she won for All About Steve. I think Tom Green also did it when he won for Freddy Got Fingered. But usually most people don't show up to collect their Razzies. I'm sure it gets sent to them in the mail, and I'm sure a lot of them hold on to it. I know Sandra Bullock said she takes pride in her Razzie and that she keeps it next to her Oscar for The Blind Side. I know Ben Affleck once appeared on Larry King Live with his Razzie that he won for Gigli. Um, so who knows? We'll see how many of the... So who knows? It... So who knows? We'll, we'll see one day if there's an interview that... If there's an article that comes out revealing where stars keep their Razzies, much like how there's articles about where stars keep their Oscars. So here are the winners for the 36th Annual Razzie Awards. Worst Remake or Sequel, Fantastic Four. Worst Screenplay, Kelly Marcel, Fifty Shades of Grey. Worst Screen Combo, Jamie Dornan and Dakota Johnson, Fifty Shades of Grey. Worst Supporting Actor, Eddie Redmayne, Jupiter Ascending. Worst Supporting Actress, Kaylee Cuoco, Alvin and the Chipmunks, The Road Chip, and The Wedding Ringer. Worst Actor, Jamie Dornan, Fifty Shades of Grey. Worst Actress, Dakota Johnson, Fifty Shades of Grey. Worst Director, Josh Trank, Fantastic Four. Worst Picture, and this was a stunner that shocked the internet. There was a tie. So Worst Picture went to Fantastic Four, Gregory Goodman, Simon Kinberg, Robert Kulzer, Hutch Parker, and Matthew Vaughn Producers, and Fifty Shades of Grey, Dana Brunetti, Michael DeLuca, and E.L. James Producers. And the final award, the one award that celebrates something good rather than something bad, the Razzie Redeemer Award went to Sylvester Stallone. From all-time Razzie champ to 2015 awards contender for Creed. Now, I've had mixed feelings about the Razzies this year because if you've watched my Razzie nominations video, you'll know that I did a huge rant where I bemoaned the lack of any nominations for the movie Hot Pursuit, which was my number one worst film of 2015 and that film easily deserved every Razzie it could get it deserved it that film deserved every Razzie nomination it could, it could get it deserved a worst picture nomination it deserved a worst director nomination for Anne Fletcher it deserved a worst screenplay nomination I can't remember the screenwriters names at the top of my head both Reese Witherspoon and Sofia Vergara should have been individually nominated for worst actress and they easily should have been nominated for Worst Screen Combo. But that's just the short end of the rant. If you, That's just the short version of the rant. If you want the longer version, you'll have to go watch my Razzie nominations video. But most of these winners were pretty much in line with what experts were predicting. Fantastic Four, nobody was... Everyone knew that was going to win Worst Remake or Sequel. Or screenplay for Fifty Shades of Grey, yep, because people kept talking about how laughably bad the screenplay was. Worst screen combo, no surprise there. Worst supporting actor, I kind of get why Eddie Redmayne won, because his performance in Jupiter Ascending became very infamous for the way in which it was done. You know, like, so bad it's good, but... I honestly would rather watch Eddie Redmayne and Jupiter Ascending 50 times than ever watch Josh Gad and Pixels. He was actually good in The Wedding Ringer. I actually like that movie, although that movie did have a lot of flaws. But in Pixels, Josh Gad played one of the most unlikable, annoying characters I have ever seen. His character in that film is a huge reason of why that movie is so bad. I really feel that he should have won for this category. Worst Supporting Actress. This was honestly a surprise for me. I honestly did not think Kaylee Cuoco would win this. 
I did not see Alvin and the Chipmunks, the road ship. I had no plans to. And she certainly played a very unlikable character in The Wedding Ringer. I have words to describe that character that I'm not going to use here because I want to keep this as clean and family-friendly as possible, but I really did not like her character in The Wedding Ringer at all. Very, very unlikable. The kind of woman that no man should ever marry. Let's just say that. But I honestly thought that Rooney Mara would win this for Pan because there was huge controversy and outcry the moment she was cast in that movie because she's playing Tiger Lily, a character that has traditionally been depicted as Native American. And while you can say it's the actor who, it's you gotta pick the best actor for the part, their race shouldn't matter, in cases like this, race does matter. And Rooney Mara has said she now regrets taking on the role because of all the backlash she got for the whitewashing of the character that's what you that's what it's called when you cast a white actor in a in a non-white role whitewashing but in addition to the whitewashing itself critics did not just did not like the performance and they felt the performance was one of the many factors that made pan a bad movie i didn't get to see pan i have heard virtually no one say anything positive about it it appeared in practically everybody's top 10 worst list of 2015 for those reasons i'm surprised she didn't win here uh, worst actor and worst actress, uh, absolutely no surprise there. Worst director, some people could argue that Sam Taylor Johnson for Fifty Shades of Grey or Andy Fickman for Paul Blart Mall Cop 2 or even Tom Six for The Human Centipede 3 final sequence would have been much more worthy of winning this, but I'm sure a lot of people feel Josh Trank deserved to win this because so many people had high hopes for Fantastic Four, and virtually everyone was disappointed and angry after seeing the film. Now I know there's a lot of reports that talk about how Josh Trank was basically bullied by Fox to make changes that he didn't want to make, so they took the movie away from him and, and edited it without his approval to a cut that he did not like. In fact, Josh Trank slammed the movie on Twitter right as soon, as soon as it was released, but then quickly deleted the tweet. But before he deleted the tweet, it went viral and caused a whole mess. So, so how sad for everyone involved. And then Worst Picture, uh, I think anyone would have been fine with either just Fantastic Four or Fifty Shades of Grey winning because there was a real debate between uh, experts as to which one should win and which one would win but in the end they both won so yay for all those who were rooting for those films to win this and then the razzie redeemer award no surprise there for sylvester stallone winning it because uh creed was one of those movies that you know people had mixed feelings about when it was first announced but then the trailers came out and people really loved the trailers and thankfully the movie was just as good, or some have said even better, than what the trailer showed. So that is it for this video. Again, I apologize for not having made individual videos about these award shows sooner. Um, but like I said, I've just been really busy lately with life and work and all that stuff. But I'm going to try and get back in the rhythm of making these videos. And thank you guys so much for watching this, and please subscribe if you want to see more videos. And I don't know if you've been able to hear, but my dog's been barking in the background a lot downstairs. And I apologize if his barking has irritated you. I don't even know if you can hear it. I certainly can hear it, and I've been trying to press on despite all this. But he's a nice dog. If you'd met him, you'd instantly fall in love with him. He just likes to bark a lot sometimes. But that's all for now, and I will see you guys next time. Bye!